Hey everyone, we have $500 worth of components here to build a budget-friendly PC for 1080p gaming. And in this video, we're gonna go over the full part list, we're gonna assemble it, and then we'll benchmark it. Will this system be powerful enough to max out games at 1080p resolution? Let's find out. We chose an AMD Ryzen 5 5500 processor for $90, ASRock's A520M HDV Micro ATX motherboard for $68, Sparkle's ARC A580 ORC OC Edition graphics card for $180, a 16GB kit of Team Group's T-Create Expert Memory for $38, a 512GB NVMe SSD from Clev for $42, Zalman's M3 Plus Micro ATX case for $50, and MSI's MAG A650 Bronze Power Supply for $60. The total price before taxes was about $528, so we did go over budget just a little bit. Some of the main limitations of this build are its 512 gigabyte SSD, which wasn't even enough to hold all of the games we benchmarked at the same time, and the non-modular 650 watt bronze rated power supply from MSI. This is a tier C PSU, so not the best quality unit out there, and it won't be a good option to handle an upgrade to a high-end GPU down the road, but it should be able to accommodate next generation mid-range GPUs in the future. Ultimately, some sacrifices had to be made with a tight budget in order to optimize for in-game performance. You could opt for a lower-end GPU like an Intel Arc A380 and then use the money saved to get a better quality power supply and more storage. But we preferred to take the higher in-game performance that the A580 offers and we made some sacrifices in order to get it. All in all, we were hoping that the combination of the Ryzen 5 5500, the Intel Arc A580 and the 16 gigabytes of RAM would be enough to run games at 1080p resolution on higher settings. But before we get into the benchmarks, let's show you how the build process went.
We benchmarked this PC in six different games. We tested it on Cyberpunk 2077, Baldur's Gate 3, Starfield, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and Pal World. In Cyberpunk, this build exceeded our expectations, averaging just over 70 frames per second on the Ultra preset and 80 frames per second on the High preset. Of course, we did not test the game at any of its ray tracing presets, as this system wouldn't have been able to handle it. However, even as we saw with the $1,000 gaming PC we built, and the $1,000 pre-built CyberPower PC Gamer Master we reviewed, even those systems struggled to run Cyberpunk with ray tracing maxed out. Overall though, the game ran really smoothly at the Ultra preset at 1080p resolution, despite Cyberpunk being a fairly taxing game to run. That's pretty impressive for just a $500 system. Baldur's Gate 3 also ran exceptionally well, averaging 86 frames per second on the Ultra preset, and just over 100 frames per second on the Medium preset. The game also ran very smoothly with no stuttering issues. We recently reviewed a $500 pre-built PC from STG Abron and had a lot of trouble running Baldur's Gate 3. It stuttered a lot during the transition scenes between running around on the map and the dialogue cutscenes. We did not have that problem with this system. Our build had no problems running the game. In Fortnite, we tested the game at the epic, high, and medium presets and also ran the game in performance mode. The build did struggle to maintain a playable frame rate at the Epic preset, failing to average 40 frames per second. It even struggled to hit 60 frames per second on the high preset. But there's no real reason to play Fortnite maxed out, and at the medium preset and in performance mode this build was able to handle the game just fine. And averaging nearly 150 frames per second in performance mode, this build is strong enough to where you could pair it with a higher refresh rate display to gain a competitive advantage in a title like Fortnite. The one game that this build just could not run at all was Starfield. The game was unplayable as our system was only able to average 19 frames per second on the lowest setting. Starfield is notoriously difficult to run so we weren't expecting great results, however we were a bit surprised to see this low of performance. Ultimately, if you're looking for a PC to run Starfield, this build will not do it for you. If your budget is set at around $500, your only option is going to be to shop the used market. Otherwise, you'll need to increase your budget in order to get a more powerful CPU and GPU combination. We also tested this build in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and again this build provided adequate performance at 1080p resolution. We were able to average 66 frames per second on the Ultra preset, and just over 70 frames per second on the High preset. The game did stutter a bit on the higher presets, but not enough to ruin the experience. The game did run much smoother at the Medium preset, and the graphics quality is still pretty good there. Overall though, the performance was good enough to make playing AC Valhalla enjoyable. We tested this build in Power World and ran it at the Epic, High, Medium, and Low presets. We weren't able to average 60 frames per second at the Epic and High presets, but the game was still playable at those settings. Turning the settings down to Medium and Low though, and the game ran much more smoothly, and the game doesn't look or play too much differently with the graphic settings turned down. Power World is still an early access game too, so we assume performance will only get better as the game moves further into development. So in the end, if you were looking for a PC that can run Power World, this build would definitely allow you to do so. While it's far more interesting to see how a build will benchmark in more demanding titles, the reality is that a lot of the most popular PC games right now aren't that demanding to run. So to give you an idea of how this PC will run those less demanding titles, we also tested this build in Valorant, Rocket League, and League of Legends. In League of Legends, this build was able to stay close to 200 frames per second for the majority of the matches we played. In Rocket League, we averaged in the mid-200s for frames per second, and the game ran really smoothly. The same was true for Valorant. The system mostly stayed in the mid to upper 200s, and it was really no challenge to run. So for Rocket League and Valorant, or other non-demanding competitive titles, those are games where you can benefit by using a higher refresh rate display, and this system was able to deliver a high enough average frame rate to where you could look at pairing it with a 144Hz or higher refresh rate monitor to gain that advantage. Ultimately, we're very happy with the performance that this $500 system provides. The combination of the budget-friendly Ryzen 5 5500 and the ARC A580 handle basically everything we threw at it with no problems.
The only game we really had trouble running was Starfield, and that is a notoriously difficult game to run. In all of the other titles we tested, we were able to get at least 60 frames per second on the higher settings. And in most of the games we tested, even in the more demanding titles like Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Cyberpunk 2077, we were able to average even higher frame rates than that. Still, with such a low budget, this system isn't going to be perfect. Its 512 gigabyte SSD didn't give us enough storage space to install all of the games we tested on at the same time. So if you were a gamer that had a large library of games, you may want to either downgrade the GPU to give yourself enough money to upgrade the SSD to give yourself enough storage, or consider spending a little bit more to get a one terabyte SSD out of the gates. The power supply we chose isn't the greatest option either. It is enough to power this build just fine, but if you wanted to upgrade your GPU in the future to a higher end tier GPU, you will have to upgrade the power supply. The bottom line though, is that for right around $500 or even just a little bit more because we did go over budget, you can build a system that can max out almost anything you throw at it at 1080p resolution. And as we saw with the $500 pre-built system we reviewed in our last video, you can't get that kind of performance out of a pre-built system for that price. In our next video, we're going to compare this build to the pre-built system we reviewed in our last video so that you can see what the difference is in performance that you'll get between building your own system and buying a pre-built system for the same price. But that does it for this video. If you have any questions on this build in particular or on the building process in general, let us know in the comments. In any case, thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.